I decided this should be called a downwick carburetor because mainly that's what's going on inside here that's making it work as good as it does as opposed to an upwicking one where you put the filter paper in the fuel and it wicks up. A little bit of that's going on inside here but mainly on the interior there's a down wicking effect and that's the magic it seems like that's making this work and I'll describe and illustrate what's going on inside here and then I'll show you the parts and how I put it all together. In my torch testing I used absorbent filter paper to wick up the fuel to get a surface area for vaporization to take place and it worked to some extent but the fuel would only wick up a certain amount so I wasn't getting the full use of all the wicking material. It also took time for it to wick up to its limit and it wasn't a real fast process. Well I took what I learned from these torch tests and then tried different changes to get more and faster wicking to get a strong continuous flame on my torch. I looked at the example of an evaporative cooler or swamp cooler. Water is dripped down on an evaporative pad and gravity soaks it all the way through it so you get the full use of all the surface area. In order to get a good steady continuous flame on the torch, I found that having a continuous supply of gas coming in worked the best, so I added a drip feed. And I added it in a way so that the gas would drip and soak or wick down a cotton rope that reached to the bottom of the jar. With this setup, I was able to get a good continuous flame on the torch. Then, when I advanced to running the engine, I went to using more material for the wicking down effect. This is an illustration I drew of the down wick carburetor so you can get an idea of what's going on inside of it. This is a container and in my case I like to use glass jars so I can see what's going on inside of it while it's operating. Uh, these hashtag marks I got inside here is a wicking material and right now I'm just using filter paper from water filters. So what happens is we'll have heated air coming in, it's being preheated from the engine exhaust, and travels down through all this wicking material, back up around across this wicking material, and then up and out. And what I added in now is a fuel drip line. So it'll drip fuel out at a rate that'll keep the engine running. So the heated air with the fuel will flow down and it'll saturate all this wicking material down here and it does it pretty quickly so we have all this surface area saturated and available for creating vapors and some can even drip down to the bottom of the jar and in that case this uh, wicking material on the sides will saturate up a little bit and then we'll get more vapors yet out of that and where I place this fuel line, I placed it below where the air enters. So we get a little bit of venturi effect right here from the air flowing past it. And when there's a greater flow of air coming in here, it'll actually suck a little more fuel down. So this interior area can be actually longer now because it will saturate the gravity will saturate all that wicking material with fuel all the way to the bottom. And you really don't even need any fuel dripping off to go up the sides. It can almost even be dried out by the time the fuel gets there. It could be all evaporated, so you won't even need any on the bottom. And the longer you make this, the more vapors you're going to get, because the air will have to flow through all that. Now this can be like another container inside here, just open at the bottom. Or what I've experienced a little bit is when you have that uh, filter running all the way down, if it's saturated with fuel, the air isn't going to want to flow directly through it. It's going to want to go around the bottom and up to get out. And now I'll show you how I put something together that makes that engine work. This is my latest version of my wicking evaporator. I switched to a two-quart mason jar. We're going to have more wicking material inside here than just that single filter piece. I started out with just a regular standard water filter and I sawed off what I wanted with a miter saw and I'm using the interior structure part and the filter. I actually use two filters for this one. This will be the exterior filter and then this one will slide right inside there 
after I put it together. And with this one, I'm going to have a fuel supply line. This will feed fuel into the evaporator. And what it is here, I just got a hose barb that'll come from the fuel tank to a needle valve, and I can adjust the flow rate right there. And it goes into a quarter inch copper tube that's open here. And this will act like wicking material too. This is a cotton clothesline. And this will drop right inside there. And this will feed fuel into the evaporator at a flow that I want. And this again is just that uh, half of a gasoline filter. And with these filters, they got two different size openings. So I made up this piece right here. This is just a half inch pipe nipple. And that'll thread into here. And this is a three quarter to half surface bushing. And that'll fit into there like that. Then that will connect onto here. The fuel soaked down this clothesline, and I'm going to wrap it around this inner part so it soaks the filter from the top down. I gotta feed it down through here. I had some nylon mesh from another filter that I put around just to hold it together. And on this uh, mason jar lid, I reinforced it with a electric cover plate to strengthen that up a little bit because it was kind of weak before, but now it's solid. And then this will just fit down, hopefully, inside there. That's what it'll look like on the inside. The fuel will be just a little bit on the bottom. It looks like i got to push that down a little bit. A few things to note if you're going to try experimenting with something like this is that you need to use materials that are compatible with gasoline. Like for you want to do some sealing on something. This here former gasket is compatible with gasoline. Don't use silicone. That'll slowly eat away a little bit and loosen up and stuff. And these filters that I've been using, this rubber starts to swell up a little bit with the gasoline. And this one I actually had to cut some of it off. And then I put a, a wrap of a, aluminum tape around there just to hold it together and to make sure the air isn't just going to come out right at the top. So the air will actually go down through the center. That's why I put that aluminum tape around there. This is what it looks like out of the jar. And then it just fits in down around that. 
Other things that I have on here, these are flapper check valves that only fold that way with just a piece of metal that will flap in there. And I got them set up to go that direction. And I put another valve here to bring some cooler air in if I didn't need all the heated stuff. Right now I got this apart and I'm making another heat exchanger from the exhaust I'm going to use. This downwick vapor carburetor that I made is actually too small for this generator if I wanted to run it at full load. This would probably handle a three and a half horse motor like on a lawnmower. But if I want to run this generator with an 8 horse motor, I'd probably need one at least two or three times bigger if I wanted to run at full load. It's handling the smaller loads all right, but not the full load. And another thing to note is that if the engine is cold, you'd have a terrible time trying to start it just on the vapor carburetor. That's one of the reasons why I left the standard carburetor on this engine. So if it's cold, I can choke it and start it up with ease and let the engine warm up and then switch over to the vapor carburetor. Otherwise, you have just a terrible time trying to start it up. So I hope this invention is inspiring, because I think it has possibilities, and I know I'll keep working on it.